So, how to practice Buddhism? It basically boils down to sit your ass down and meditate. There are over 500 million Buddhists in the world. You will find that there are quite a lot of different flavors of Buddhism. From Theravada Buddhism, practiced more in Southeast Asia, literally meaning the school of the elders, to Shaolin or Zen of the Mahayana school, literally meaning the great vehicle. The goal of these two largest branches of Buddhism are different. While Theravada, the old school, emphasizes transcending the self and attaining liberation for yourself, Mahayana, the great vehicle, emphasizes what is called the Bodhisattva path, that is, working towards the liberation of all beings, which is why it is called the Great Vehicle. In both cases, the practice that you are doing is that you're transcending the ego, the self. That is to say, if on one hand you have a person who always wants to do what their volitions tell them to do, now they want to eat this thing, now they want to do that thing, now they want to experience this, now they want to go to this place, now they don't want to clean their dishes. That is a lot of ego, a lot of self. Wanting, wanting this, not wanting to do the other thing. And it is perfectly fine, of course. The Buddhist way, however, is to reduce this stranglehold that the ego has on you. The Zen school would say, you do only exactly what is, what is the adequate thing to do in a situation. When it's leaking through the roof, you fix the roof. You don't struggle with it. You don't hesitate. You don't contemplate about the problematicness of the roof having a leak. A common example used are cats. When the cat gets scared, when there's a predator, the cat will just move aside and, and run away without hesitation, without going into this mental dilemma of, oh, but why are there predators in this life? Is there anything that I can do in order to reduce the amount of predators in life? How will other cats suffer with the existence of predators around? Presumably, this cat is not asking itself this question. It just does. And same thing with Buddhist practice, of course. You just meditate, you just clean your dishes, you just do your garden, you just help other people. Everything else is hesitation. And what you will find in Zen stories, in Zen koans, Zen riddles, is this, however it is the student thinks of the situation, however large his thoughts are and however far he thinks, and at the end there is no good and evil, of course, right? So why should he do this and that and whatnot? But the answer at the end is, of course, always, well, if you see the grandma who needs help, help the grandma, regardless of everything being shunyata in the end, of everything being beyond good and evil, of there being no good and evil in the first place, of there being no higher moral or lower moral. At the end of the day, you help the grandma who needs help there. The emphasis that Buddhism has is wisdom and compassion. Do not be a cold-hearted, bitter, wise person but also do not be a fool who is too kind to other people. Be as kind as a loving grandmother and be as wise as a sage. Keep in mind that the only practice that all schools of Buddhism have in common is what Grand Master Thich Nhat Hanh would call mindfulness. Mindfully doing whatever it is that you are doing. Meditation is nothing else than mindful sitting. There are, of course, forms of meditation where you are counting your breaths and finding the root of your thoughts and your emotions and so on. It is true, but they are not shared across all schools of Buddhism. The only thing that they share is what we would call mindfulness. Walking mindfully, cleaning your dishes mindfully, cooking and eating mindfully, talking mindfully. Everything else that you may see from movies, from our videos that we make here, they are culture. This is Eastern culture. The practice of martial arts, of calligraphy, of tea drinking, 
but done with mindfulness, of course. And the wonderful thing is that you can practice this everywhere. If you're looking for more inspiration, though, I very much suggest listening to Buddhist sutras, chanting, devotional meditation practices, tea ceremonies, mindful walks in the forest, the practice of Tai Chi Chun or Qigong, mindful gardening, mindful group meditations, sitting with yourself and the child within you and working on past traumas, stargazing and contemplating upon the vastness of the universe and the Tao. So therefore, practice Buddhism, my friend. Practice the core teaching of Buddhism. Gladly, in any situation that you're in, returning Amazon packages, doing your workout, sitting mindfully and listening to family dinners, and in the evening, after a long day of Buddhist practice, sitting your ass down and meditating. Amitofo. Oh,